let's talk a little bit about layers in paint.net and layers uh, are useful for a few reasons uh, I'll show you what they are if you look up here on the right there's several of these icons for windows that you can get um, you may already be familiar with the colors window and uh, this one here is the layers window which I already have up for us to see and you see there's only one layer so far and it's called background um, down here there are several icons I will show you uh, a little bit about what they do and um, how you can use them and how you can manipulate the layers and let's get started with uh, putting some text let's swap our colors first of all actually let's swap it back and I'm going to show you uh, the first reason that I like to use layers and we're going to put a black layer and then this button here on the layers window far left add new layer that puts a layer on top of our existing layer and with layers you can make changes and manipulate what you have in one layer without it affecting anything in the others and uh, now we go swap it back to white and let's have some text let's use an old block font that I like uh, it's thicker which I think is good for uh, putting effects on it you can see them better let's just type my name and now my name is on a layer above the black background watch if I use a magic wand select we're selecting it has nothing to do with well you can't really tell that but it has nothing to do with the black layer below it and actually these check marks show layer visibility so let's make my name invisible that layer is still there but it's not showing up so now we check it again and let's change flood mode to universal select whoa and look at that you're gonna make this mistake too I still make this mistake I had the wrong layer selected see why I didn't select my name we had the background layer so change it to that layer click one of the letters and now my name is selected um, I'm going to show you some effects to uh, combine that with the layer tutorial here and I will share the links to the effects plugins in the video description so that you can get them if you're interested um, let's go back to lime green and one um, plugin that I really like is called checkerboard maker and We'll cancel that real quick. <laughs> we want black and green. Effects render checkerboard maker. And see how it's putting a checkerboard on the text? And it's only doing it on the selected area, so that's why I selected my name. A uh, few things to learn here that I really like about this plugin. <clears throat> you can change whether the horizontal and vertical grid steps are linked, which I usually like to do. And then can bring it down and actually also I want to swap we have which color is primary and which is secondary and I want to swap that I just like that look better let's bring the grid step up just a little and you can change the brush brush width of the the grid lines so let's do that and we hit OK and here's something I forgot to do um, that I was going to teach you about but I can also teach you another way around it I was going to duplicate the layer with my white text with my name and I forgot to do that before I added this effect uh, because I wanted to have the white text behind it to do an effect so I'll show you another way around it one thing you could have done before I did the effect was see here's the duplicate layer button 
but now since I still have the text selected, let's add a new layer. Let's make white our primary color. And let's do a paint bucket flood mode global. And click. Look at that. Now we have our white text back. And edit deselect. Now I wanted this text, the white below the one with the grid that I did. So <clears throat> this button, see I can move layers up or down. And this is the top layer, I can move it down. Now I still want to have it selected. And I'm going to do an effect here and you'll see what this will do. Distort. Well, actually let's do blur and a Gaussian blur. And I can change, let's move this out of the way, I can change the radius. And look at that, we get a little bit of a drop shadow effect. Now I want to brighten that up a little bit. So photo glow that looks good I can change these levels if I want but I don't so let's click OK there now remember I said <clears throat> there's several reasons for using layers one of them is just for uh, the design process f for for what effects you get um, combining layers like having the drop shadow behind the the text with the green grid and another is during the design process just to help you see things let's say I wanted to have my name here with this nice glowing sh drop shadow effect and I want to eventually save that just transparent so I can maybe put it on top of something else while I'm designing, imagine I did not have the black background. You can't see that the white uh, glow effect and I can't tell if it looks good. So this black background, whether I want to keep that in my final image or not, it was nice to have it in a design process to, to see that glow and to make it look how I want it to look. So I can just remove it now and now let's say we're done we've designed what we want we like how it looks we still have two layers and as you know paint.net is a raster graphics program not vector so we are not going to be able to save this <clears throat> in a final format that will have layers we can save it as a paint.net project file and come back and play with those layers later but as far as a final usable image, paint.net only does things like JPEG, PNG, or GIF. Um, might be a few others, but so let's save this as a PNG. Now I already had an image here from a test I did before, so it's going to ask to overwrite that. But watch what happens since we have these two layers still e that still exist. Save, yes, replace it. And this comes up and we want auto detect, that's fine. And look at this. Saving in this file format requires that the image is first flattened, which reduces it to a single layer. So, <clears throat> see, PNG won't support layers. So we say, yes, you can flatten it for us. And now it did, and it saved it. So we have a flat PNG image with a transparent background. And yes, I didn't crop it, but we have a, an image with a transparent background. So my name with that glowing background, I can overlay that. And if you think about it, I was not able to do that kind of an effect without layers. So let's show you another way um, that layers are useful. <clears throat> Let's add 
Let's add that black background back again. And let's just play around here. Um, if you right click, or actually let's double click on a layer, you get the layer properties. And here are some useful things for you to think about in the design process. Um, you can change the opacity. Now we have the layer selected that's the black text with the green grid and if you change look at that change the opacity you see the kind of effect you get there you can move it up or down you can actually make it no it doesn't even exist anymore um, well the layer exists but the text doesn't show up so you do that and there's also blending modes <clears throat> and I don't know how they'll look here because the bottom layer doesn't really look much different, but you get a preview. They just do some weird things, but you can see, you can experiment with what the um, the blending modes do. <clears throat> In the blending modes, where it's the one layer is not just on top of the other. I told you the layers are sort of like separate images, but blending modes sort of make layers interact with each other, even though they are separate. So, <clears throat> just for the heck of it, let's say, okay, we like that, even though that's horrible looking. <laughs> but uh, see how the top layer and the layer below it um, sort of interact because of the, the blending mode that I changed. And we can actually go back in and put it back if I want which I do. So uh, those are some of the effects, um, some of the reasons you can have layers. Uh, the black background to help you um, see things that are hard to see on, a, on, on the default checkerboard and then you can get rid of it before you save the final image um, and then just layers to help you add depth um, and layers that can help you uh, add things that will help interact with each other when you change the blending modes. So, like I said, uh, some of these effects that I showed you are, are plugins, and I will link to them in the uh, in the video description so that you can you can add those to Paint.net for yourself and play with them if you like. And uh, that's uh, a general introduction to layers in Paint.net.